your hero on your journey to mastery of your world, you will be sure to encounter environmental obstacles, unpredictable events, and competitive opposition. Such circumstances can inhibit growth, waste resources, and ruin life or reputation. Arming yourself with a strategy to help minimize and neutralize such threats is a defense strategy that should never be ignored. Therefore, dear hero, I invite you to take from my disquisition a basic understanding of Sun Tzu's art of war strategy and a framework for strategic thinking to use in your everyday life. To begin, dear hero, let us look at the legend of Sun Tzu and his art of war military treaties. Sun Tzu was the son and grandson of banished generals in ancient China. Secrets of military strategy were passed on to him, and, in an effort to gain opportunity as a general himself, he organized them in a poetic-like treatise to reference his credibility and knowledge of effective warfare leadership. After a bloody presentation of his skill and understanding of obedience and iron discipline, Sun Tzu was granted the position. Using insights from his Art of War treatise, Sun Tzu disappeared into history after victoriously displaying the superiority of his strategy in defeating the enemies he faced. The Art of War military treatise, now over 2,500 years old, is still required reading today in many military departments around the world. It is well known for the flexible way people can use its principles in daily life outside of war. The 13-chapter document teaches a strategy of obtaining victory by exploiting the mistakes and disadvantages of the opponent, while alerting the reader to mistakes and disadvantages that could lead to their own defeat. To explore the strategy, I will present Sun Tzu principles, tips, and laws under a premise of five main advantages. 1. The environment. 2. Allies. 3. Resources. 4. Information. and 5. Leadership. 1. The environment. Environment refers to the time or season, and the distances and the terrain. Some general rules of environmental strategy are as follows. Defense is secure in low ground, while offense is deployed from high ground. The first to arrive to a battle will have time to get ready, whereas the second to arrive will be tired from their journey. Know the time and place of battle and remember that speed is the essence of war. Attack places that must be defended and use a concentrated attack on a dispersed defense. Avoid dangers, but maneuver the enemy into them or their backs facing the danger. Some rules for the nine varieties of ground are as follows. 1. On home ground, no fighting unless invaded. 2. When shallow, penetrated, don't stop. 3. On quarrelsome ground, don't attack. 4. On open ground, don't block. 5. At intersecting crossroads, make allies. 6. In deep penetration, plunder. 7. In difficult ground, keep steady. 8. In tight spaces, strategize. 9. In places without an escape, fight ferociously. 2. Allies. Allies are an advantage that can help you crush your enemies, keep you safe, and help you flourish. With them, you do not have to face obstacles alone. Without them, one is doomed to be overwhelmed. Therefore, it is imperative that you cultivate and maintain alliances, but that you also prevent oppositional alliances from coordinating. Consider it a rule of warfare to drive wedges through enemy alliances and to cultivate alliances with your neighbors. 3. Resources Resources are the tools at a general's disposal. This often refers to money, but also refers to weaponry and the military force itself. Know that a lack of resources will cause others to exploit you and ruin your people. As the duration of time, distance, size, and training of the military increases, so too will the cost of maintaining it. For this reason, it is imperative that you make it a point to forage on the enemy. Treat their resources as if they were worth 20 times your own. Recognize the value of taking control of a whole and intact enemy over that of a ruined one. Reward victory and spies. Don't be cheap, but realize too many rewards will lead to one going broke, and too many punishments will only put your force into dire distress. Avoid stupid haste, but know that cleverness is not associated with long delays. Only tactical evil profits from prolonged warfare. 4. Information. Information is power. Do not underestimate this, and remember that all warfare is based on deception. Therefore, it is important to never be cheap when it comes to acquiring spies, and always punish leaks. The five types of spies are 1. The local spy, often a guide or someone familiar with the location. 2. The inside spy, this is a spy within the enemy organization. 3. The converted spy, this is an enemy spy that has been recruited to work for you. 4. The doomed spy, often referred to as a dead spy, this is usually the kind that brings false information. 5. The surviving spy, often referred to as a living spy, this is usually the kind that infiltrates the enemy and stays hidden for long periods of time as an active source. Information is one of the greatest advantages in war. Seek out spies to recruit and treat them well. Information helps a general make better decisions. Factors to consider are the five fundamentals of war. 1. The moral law or social order. 2. Heaven. The time of day, the season, the weather. 3. Earth. The ground, the terrain, the distance. 4. The commander's character, their wisdom and their courage. 5. Organization, the method and the discipline. When assessing your ability to combat an enemy, compare who has more social influence, more command experience, better time and space advantage, more obedient and organized troops, 
a larger sized army and better weaponry, a higher training level, and compare who has more consistent disciplinary measures. After the comparisons are made, make sure you meet the following five essentials for victory. 1. Knowing when to fight or when not to fight. 2. Knowing how to handle large fighting forces and small stealth forces. 3. Having a united spirit throughout the ranks. 4. Lays in weight, doesn't arrive exhausted. 5. The capacity and freedom to battle without hierarchical interference. Be flexible with plans and consider both advantages and disadvantages. Make no mistakes, and as a rule, remember, the enemy provides you with the opportunity to defeat them. It is your job to exploit their mistakes. Let circumstances decide the tactic and hold baits to entice the enemy to where you need them to go. 5. Leadership. The final advantage is the leader themselves. This refers to their character, their wisdom, and their experience. We begin with dangers to be aware of. The five faults of a general's character are 1. Recklessness. This leads to destruction. 2. Cowardice. This leads to capture. 3. A hasty temper. This is easily provoked. 4. Being too honorable makes one easily shamed. 5. Being too compassionate exposes one to unnecessary worry and trouble. The three misfortunes of a general. 1. Ignorance of the inability to advance or retreat. This can cause the improper order to be deployed. 2. Ignorance of the condition of the army. This can cause a misunderstanding of the army's abilities. 3. Employment without discrimination. This can cause social problems and put unskilled people in important positions that require expertise. The five military faults of a general. 1. Retreat. This occurs when an army is forced to fight a too large of a force. 2. Insubordination. This is when the general employs passive officers to lead aggressive soldiers. 3. Desertion. This occurs when aggressive officers lead passive soldiers. 4. Sabotage. This occurs when the general employs soldiers that are not united in spirit with the rest of the army. 5. Disorganization. This occurs when the general's authority and character are passive and lazy and when the commands lack information and clear communication. Some rules to remember as a leader are Be warm but use an iron discipline. Pick the right people for the task. Reward victory. Rouse to anger so that the will to kill exists. Use desperation as a fighting advantage by battling without an escape. There are no benefits to prolonged warfare. Be bold and quick-witted. Always be ready to seize advantage. Be unpredictable and overawe the opponent. Use a small force to battle, but a large force is required for capture. Avoid the strong and attack the weak. Plan first, then move. Prepare and lay in wait. Use attack forces and stealth forces together. Recognize that using bait will require a sacrifice. And remember, all warfare is based on deception. When attacking with fire, flood, or any stealth attack, prioritize attacks in the following order. 1. Campsites. 2. Supplies. 3. Equipment. 4. Weaponry. 5. The army itself. In closing, dear hero, Sun Tzu's art of war may be ancient, but it is not outdated. Its approach to strategy prioritizes flexibility and obeys natural laws. While some wording specifically applies to warfare, many have used creative insights to apply it to the social world, to sports, and to business as well. Use this basic overview of its lessons to provide yourself with a framework for thinking strategically when facing life's inevitable misfortunes. Go forth and always remember, our defeat exists in our own hands. Do inform against me, my oh, from this time on, my thoughts.